In an hour and a half from now, Big Band Special will be on the air with Sheila Tracy introducing the second of two programmes recorded at the Festival Theatre Paynton with Selena Jones and the BBC Big Band conducted by Barry Forgey. But now our regular Monday evening date with Alan Dell. Hello and good evening. As you may know, I was on holiday out of reach of a microphone when I heard of dear Henry Hall's passing. I returned from holiday only last Monday, and since then I've gathered together just a few of the musical memories that we all associate with Henry and his long and most rewarding career, rewarding for us through the happiness and great entertainment he brought us all. Henry's musical career started as a boy trumpeter in the Salvation Army. He had the distinction of being the youngest member of the International Staff Band. But more seriously, perhaps, he studied at the Trinity College of Music and the Guild Hall School of Music before serving in the First World War, where he played the piano at garrison parties and thus had an early taste of music on the lighter side. After the war, while serving as deputy pianist at the Midland Hotel in Manchester, he filled in while a dancer made a costume change by playing a Chopin study that so impressed the manager of the LMS hotel chain, Arthur Tao, that he invited Henry to become the director of the band at their new prestige hotel at Glen Eagles in Scotland. This is Henry Hall speaking to you. We are now going to play you Come Ye Back to Bonnie Scotland, which is the signature tune of the Glen Eagles Hotel Band. Not only the signature tune of the Glen Eagles Hotel Band, but a Henry Hall composition. Henry's career with the Midland Hotel chain was most creative. He persuaded the BBC to broadcast the band and Decker to record it. And by 1931, he had some 32 of the hotel's bands under his control. Then the BBC took a further hand. In January 1932, Henry was summoned to Savoy Hill to be told that Jack Payne was leaving and the corporation wanted Henry to form and lead a new BBC dance orchestra. The new orchestra was supposed to be introduced to the public through a new Columbia record, like this. This is Henry Hall speaking. I have been requested to give listeners some idea of what they may expect from the new BBC dance orchestra. This Columbia record gives an opportunity of illustrating this by allowing the orchestra to speak for itself. I hope to strike a new note in orchestrations which will present a colourful background for the tunes we shall feature. The old favourite we are now playing, Avalon, will enable us to suggest some of the harmonic effects we shall be using. For example, notice the three clarinets sustaining harmony behind the baritone saxophone solo here. In this orchestra, we are introducing an instrument all too rare in dance bands, the oboe. You will notice the effect added to this solo by the background of the celeste and two violins. In contrast to that, here we have the saxophone quartet. Observe the richness of the full round tone. to the guitar and the trombone, vibraphone chord you see. I could offer you many more examples but I hope that our future recordings which will be exclusive to Columbia will give us many opportunities for demonstrating how these musical effects will be developed. Finally, listen to the gradual building up from a piano solo.
various instrumental combinations until the addition of brass and chimes complete what you are now hearing. The new BBC Dance Orchestra. In the event, that introductory record to the new BBC Dance Orchestra was never released to the public. They had to wait until the evening of March the 15th, 1932, and the band's first broadcast when it opened the new broadcasting house in Portland Place. Henry Hall's opening signature tune, It's Just the Time for Dancing, was on the air for the first time that March evening. Henry's was a different approach to programming from his predecessor, Jack Payne. He set out to appeal to the widest of audiences with an enormous variety of musical styles. He had show and film selections, the newest of dance tunes, of course. He waved the flag for British composers. And one of his most successful ideas was his special regard for the children who made a point of hurrying home to listen to his 515 broadcasts. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Uh, we made the record for Columbia, and on a recording session, you make four titles. Right. Well, the first two records took rather a long time, and the, for the fourth title, we had to do something very quickly. So we stuck the instruments around as we thought were near enough, and we looked at the clock, and we had four minutes to go. And so we said, we'll go for a master. And we made the teddy bears picnic, and I know we've sold over uh, three million. But of course, the, one of the enormous things was that using the xylophone, um, I used a, a sousaphone. Yes. We found that we'd made the perfect record. And for years, the BBC tested all lines and became the test piece of all lines for all engineers virtually around the world. If you go down in the woods today, you'd better not go alone. It's lovely down in the woods today, but safer to stay at home. For every bear that ever there was, we'll gather there for certain, because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. <laughs> What a classic that became. The Teddy Bear's Picnic with the voice of Henry's first vocalist with the BBC Dance Orchestra, Val Rosing. In fact, that was made towards the end of Val Rosing's period with the band. His replacement was Les Allen, who was equally at home singing ballads like I Cover the Waterfront or The Song Is You, or novelties such as Let's All Sing Like the Birdies Sing, or this little bit of nonsense that involves uh, some of the others in the band. <laughs> I loved a girl who was a peach, as sweet as she could be. She married Mr. Lemon, and then she turned sour on me. Oh, keep it to yourself. Oh, keep it to yourself. There are seven days in every week, but keep it to yourself. Say, what's the idea? You're spoiling our song. I'm giving it atmosphere. But well, what's that whistle for? The bird. Oh! An early bird will catch the worm, too. That you will agree. I went out early, and a little bird, she caught me. Oh, keep it to yourself. Oh, keep it to yourself. If you cannot stretch your rubber neck, keep it to yourself. A bumblebee lit on me once, and it was plain to see. To keep from getting stung, I had to let the bumblebee. Oh, keep it to yourself. Oh, keep it to yourself. If a honeybee gives you its comb, keep it to yourself.
My music teacher told me that in music I'd go far If I would only keep from running round from bar to bar Oh, keep it to yourself Oh, keep it to yourself If you fiddle round and break your bow Keep it to yourself I'm playing in a big jazz band And I play jazz so sweet I cannot blow a clarinet But hear me tweet, tweet, tweet Oh, keep it to yourself Oh, keep it to yourself Our band is led by Henry Hall So keep it to yourself Keep it to yourself Oh, keep it to yourself A horse will win the derby race But keep it to yourself The latest tips we get by wire keep them to ourselves. Len Berman was another of Henry's vocalists of novelty material at that time with songs like Leave the Pretty Girls Alone, I Bought Myself a Bottle of Ink and The Man on the Flying Trapeze. And one must not forget the beautiful Phyllis Robbins and delightful Kitty Masters. All brought their special qualities to Henry Hall's broadcasts and recordings. There were others who added greatly to the Henry Hall story. And uh, I remember recalling in a BBC 50th anniversary programme in 1972, this famous music hall duo, for instance. Underneath the arches, we dream of dreams of bum bum ba da bi do Underneath the bum bum ba di da bo On cobblestones we lie, da bo ba ba bo Back to back with body ba 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 di do Tired out and bo bo da bo ba di do Sorry when the daylight comes creeping Herald in the dawn, sleeping when it's raining, and sleeping when it's fine. Trains rattling by, up aboard and a be the boat. Payment is a be a yellow, without a sheet we lay. Underneath the arches, we dream of. Dreams are Flanagan and Allen's first enormous hit and made with the BBC dance band in July 1932. A little over 18 months later, in fact on Henry Hall's second anniversary as director of the BBC dance band, he was again in the recording studios. And we went into the studio and into the studio we found we'd got Elsie and Doris Waters who we were recording for part of her. We had June and Nona Wynn came along and uh, we, we made up a bunch of these boys. Mark. We said, why don't we put this on the air tonight? We call it Henry Hall's Guest Night. Mm -hmm. And this is what we did. And that was the beginning. No rehearsal, nothing at all. When the artists used to come on, we used to write them on the blackboard to tell the band what to do. And as a reminder of Henry Hall's famous and long-running series of guest nights, a famous record that he made on that very day that the idea was born, March the 17th, 1934. Lupino Lane and the BBC dance band in this song, An Elephant Never Forgets. Dogs were born for howling cats are always prowling beasts are always growling nature makes them do it all the jungle folk have habits of their own a worm will turn in quite the nicest way the conger eel can always feel but hasn't much to say a steer or deer have no lifelong regrets you can soft soap an antelope but an elephant never forgets it smiles a smile while waiting for its chance then lifts its foot and kicks you in the pants no power can sour baboons or mama's zit the camel's always got the hump but an elephant never forgets henry hall's guest nights begun on that march evening in 1934 ran for very nearly a quarter of a century those who keep statistics like Henry Hall devotee Harold Kay tells me there were 972 broadcasts. And Henry often looked back on them with great joy, I know. I know also that he was happy with some of his compositions, particularly the song he wrote for the maiden voyage of Queen Mary in 1936, on which he travelled. 
somewhere at sea, a liner is somewhere at sea, bringing to me a traveler who will build my life anew. He's out on the sea, sailing to me, sailing to me. When shall I see my lover come home from the sea? Hurry to me, great liner, for you can make my dream come true. Wherever you be, answer my plea, somewhere at sea. second of those Henry Hall compositions, the theme music of the film that starred the BBC Dance Orchestra, Music Has Charms. Just a little later, Henry enjoyed the expertise of American arranger Benny Carter. The scores he provided were a highlight that Henry never forgot. divided in two won't do so i'm putting all my eggs in one basket i'm betting everything i've got on you
Dan Donovan, the vocalist, as he was in Somewhere at Sea, RMS Queen Mary's signature tune. Now, all too briefly, a reminder of another of Henry's great friends and band personalities, George Elric. I lost my way in the thick, thick fog, in the thick, thick fog in London. It was half past nine, I was taking out the dog in the thick, thick fog in London. I wandered round and round and round the houses. I couldn't find a policeman anywhere. And at half past two, when the moon broke through, Och, I couldn't get him because the hit they got no fair. After five and a half years at the BBC, Henry, in September 1937, with some old and some new members, decided to leave and take his orchestra on tour. In 1972, for the golden age of British dance music, he reminisced. When I arrived at the BBC, I arrived on a Wednesday evening, March the 15th, and uh, when I played, I was there for entertainment. I was a show band, and I had to represent the British Broadcasting Corporation with Sir John Reef, who didn't like dance music. Uh, his favorite tune was Hallelujah, you know. Uh, and when I appeared at the command performance, we went into the studio in the basement there. We put on our blue jackets for the band, and. Uh, we played the program to him, and he sat in solitary state in the balcony while I played it. And he said to me a line which I never forgot. He said, you mustn't forget, Hall, when you appear on Monday night, you will represent the British Broadcasting Corporation and all that it stands for. Which Henry Hall did, always did, with great dignity and complete professionalism. On tour, he continued to bring his expert entertainment to theatre audiences, and I remember his telling me with what delight he played on a visit to the continent this superbly orchestrated version by Burton Gillis, Henry's lead saxophonist and lieutenant for so many years, of Under the Double Eagle. <laughs> Thank you. 
It was also during our 1972 conversation in his office at Steinway Hall that Henry, a little wistfully, made this remark. Across there you will see a library of music of 70 years. I became a dance band leader in 1922, so I've had 50 years connected with bands. And if some of the boys today who are doing good feel as happy when they've had 50 years in the business, I should be highly delighted, perhaps a little surprised, but uh, nevertheless, to me, pretty terrific. And uh, looking back over the years, I think they've been wonderfully served by the BBC, and I personally have had the most wonderful career of happiness with them that I could possibly have. So, goodbye everyone, and here's to the next time. And of course, there will be many more next times with Henry Hall's music. I'm honoured to have known him as a very good friend whom I last saw on his 91st birthday in May. I shall miss him, but I have many memories I shall treasure of him. The musical ones I shall look forward to sharing with you in future editions of the Dance Band Days. Well, it's difficult to turn from those few recollections of the late Henry Hall, but we do now to musical thoughts of a different kind in music from the big band era. I was uh, delving, sorry about that, into a section of 45s which I'd not looked at in years and found that one and a few other nice things that uh, I might find space for before the end of this half hour. Ray Anthony, that was, and love is just around the corner. Ray with strings. There was a strong possibility, I heard, that uh, Ray Anthony would be coming over here in the latter part of this year, but uh, it looks like we'd only have the pleasure of his company next year. More Anthony uh, momentarily. Next, though, Ralph Flanagan.
that's a not overdone standard. You leave me breathless. The Ralph Flanagan Orchestra.